So tool storage is hugely important to a lot of us makers, especially a clean, nice, organized look. And that was the motivation behind making this video in this system. And I asked in that video, should I put these for sale? Should I put these holders for sale? And the response was overwhelmingly yes. So I've gone back to my CNC and I've redone this. And I'm gonna explain why I had to redo it and why I really should if I'm gonna offer it to you. So by the look of this, this looks like a pretty nice setup, and it is, don't get me wrong. There's a couple things though I need to change. One is I don't like the length of these. These need to be a little bit longer in my opinion, and you can see the exposed dados in these 90 degree pieces. That's not good, and we're gonna fix that. You can see here that I've prototyped quite a few, but what we've got here, honestly, I'm so happy with it. So here's the final product, guys. This piece is a little bit longer for better stability. You cannot see any exposed dados. It just looks good. It looks better. It looks more polished. The throat here to hold the tool is a little bit wider, which accepts every major tool company's drills. And there's a little feature here I'm gonna show you, depending on how far apart you put these yourself. And that is where you can customize this system. So check it out. So before we dive into any more details, I wanna show you how I make these. I basically go over to the CNC and mount a piece of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. This is really high quality plywood. It's got 13 evenly spaced plies throughout, no voids, really good stuff. So after a little bit of cleanup, we're gonna bring these pieces over to the workbench and I'm gonna show you something interesting. If you don't know this already, at the bottom of your piece, after you see and see it, well, you've got these things called fuzzies, as we call them in the business. I'm not gonna ship them to you that way. I'm going to personally hand sand each piece and then ship them to you so they look nice and clean. Now, this next step, this is on you. Once you get your product, I do recommend hand sanding a little bit to kind of break the edges and make everything feel nice and smooth. You don't want your tool nor your hands to get any splinters. Also, the assembly is pretty easy. I put a little dab of glue into the first dado on the smaller piece, and then another dab of glue into the larger piece. I then join them together at 90 degrees with a dead blow. I've made these tolerances pretty tight because once you get this thing together, it's really not gonna go anywhere. I check for square, and every piece that's come off the CNC has been dead nuts, and I'm so happy with this result. You can also put it together with CA glue as well. That's definitely an option. But the tolerances are so tight that honestly, you probably could do no glue and not have any ill effects. Now the assembly is complete, let's talk about some installation. Each bracket is gonna come with four mounting screws. I'm gonna include that in the package. They're pen head screws and they mount thusly as you see here. I like to take a level, put a line, and then put my pieces in place to keep everything nice and neat. I will tell you my recommendation is to cut a piece of plywood that can hang on a cleat wall and then mount your mounts to that. Three quarters of an inch backing is definitely the strongest way to go. If you have a bit mag or the hanging hook still on your drills, no worries because you still have clearance for those. And look at this little hidden feature. If you separate them out just enough, you can actually store, yep, three tools. Pretty cool. This is an option that's a little quirky, but you may want to explore it. Now, there is one pretty cool thing about this system. It holds a multitude of different tools. I designed two different pieces when I built this. This one was a little bit narrower and this one was wider, so it could fit this angle grinder. Now, I will say this, check out this clip. I have redesigned the new pieces now, the new mounts, to actually hold that angle grinder. However, let's say your angle grinder isn't quite that, well, thin. There's another way to mount it, and it involves getting two of these. Let me show you. Had quite a few comments about angle grinder storage with these. Well, if you mount them together, a little bit far apart and that guard is still on your angle grinder, it fits in there just like this and the storage for that is actually pretty darn handy. I love how that turned out. Now let's say you don't wanna store your grinder back there. Hey, you can use it for something else. You can store your epoxy mixing pails. You can even store something like a Yeti cup. Hey, the choice is yours. So as silly as that storage solution is, that's the beauty of this system. And if you do purchase this from me, um, which I hope you do, all links are in the description. It's on the website. Um, I've got them pretty competitively priced as well. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. And I really do appreciate you guys watching. I will say one more thing too. The catalyst to me for me to build this, okay, came from this idea right here. The idea of putting pneumatic tools up underneath a system like this. Now, this product here can go on the side, the top, 
any direction you want. Uh, it's by a company called Tool Wrangler, and he's a small business as well, just as I am at this point as well. So I'm gonna link him down below. Without this, I wouldn't have been motivated to do this or do these, and now they're available. So check out Tool Wrangler as well, and then check out what I have to offer too. Um, I will leave you with a, a, a parting thought here about uh, being, well, working for myself now. Uh, people ask, is it scary? Yeah, it's scary, it is. It's scary going out there, knowing that I have a wife and three children I have to provide for, and now I'm doing all this, all this on my own. Um, the best analogy is, is that I used to be part, when I was with Public Supermarkets, I used to be a part of, let's say, a big NFL team, a 53-man roster, right? And now, I don't have the security of a team that will still perform well, even if I have a bad day, if I have a bad performance, if I don't rush for 100 yards, whatever that might be. Um, now I'm like more of a professional golfer, right? I'm only as good as my next swing. And this, well, every video is a swing, but developing products is definitely a swing too. And I'm hoping that I at least hit it down the middle. <laughs> I'm not asking for a hole in one. I will try for a hole in one, but that's pretty rare. But I, uh, that's the best I got, and that's how it feels, really. And I really appreciate each and every one of your support. Um, the overwhelming comments that I got on this video, hundreds and hundreds of comments uh, that came in, and the majority of them were like, yes, sell them. You need to, I want them. Give me a pack of six right now. I've had emails come in uh, just about, hey, listen, can you make some real quick before you put them on? I'm like, oh my goodness. So here they are. Links are down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the support thus far, and I can't wait to continue this whole maker journey that I'm on right now. So thank you so much. See you then.